special greetings to our viewers. We praise the Lord who has been a refuge, a strength, and a very present help in trouble. We thank you for joining us for today's episode of The Great Controversy, as we'll be discussing Chapter 9. My name is Zuki Swanube, and I'm joined by my fellow panelists, my brother Newo, Assistant Sigi, Mam Mioli, and our brother Francois. As we begin, we'll begin with a word of prayer and we'll ask Sister Nsihi to please pray for us. <coughs> Let's pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this opportunity as we are going to read for the God or narrate the chapter of uh, the Swiss Reformer. We ask for your Holy Spirit, Father God, to enable us and to grant us wisdom and power. We also pray for the viewers at home for the God that you prepare their hearts and make them receptive to this word, Father God, so that they may accept it for the board and run with it. In Jesus' name, we ask all these things, believing that you have granted them to us. Amen. Amen. Now, if you've been following the series, you'll know that we've been discussing some of the great men of the faith, some of them who had to lay down their lives so that the gospel could be spread throughout all of Europe. We started off with Wycliffe, we went to Jerome and Haas, hmm. Haas and Jerome, or Jerome and Haas, we discuss Kinduza, and today we're going to be discussing the Swiss reformer, and his name is Jurek Zwingli. Oh, yeah. So as we begin, you know, there's something interesting that I noticed when I was reading this chapter, and even other chapters, you, you'll be able to pick this up, and it's the fact that God usually predominantly uses men that don't necessarily have some sort of title, oh, yes. wealth, you know, that are not given homage by people, but... Mm. He prefers to use instruments that are humble, you know, people that are not so wealthy and can be used for his service mm. so that all glory and honor can go to him and not to the person himself. Mm. And we see this, you know, with, with um, John Huss, for example, we see this mm -hmm. with Luther. I mean, we even find it in the Bible when we talk about the disciples, that Christ chose the top disciples. Oh, yeah. None of them were of particular wealth, if you think about it. Mm. They were humble men that yeah. could be used as instruments. I mean. If I think in the Bible about Moses, Moses was from a certain class of family, but God had to humble him mm. so that he could be, you know, efficient in the work that God desired him to do. Yes. And so we see this just generally in the scriptures and in history, and we see it also in Zwingli. Mm. I mean, with the disciples, they were fishermen, you know, and fishermen, that was a very humble um, occupation in those days, mm. you know. But I think what God was doing was using people who, were not um, influenced by the false teachings of those times, you know. I mean, if you think about the disciples, for example, they, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, mm -hmm. they had um, beclouded the word of God. And mm -hmm. if they were to use the leading men of those days, um, it would be interpreted wrongly and received in a, in a, in a very erroneous manner by the people. Mm -hmm. And we can see also during this period of the Dark Ages as well, there was a lot of superstition, a lot of false teachings around the word of God. So God couldn't use the leading men of those times. Oh, yeah. He could only work through <coughs> humble instrumentalities, people mm -hmm. who had teachable spirits, yeah. you know, um, who were willing to learn in the school of Christ. And those are the people that God um, um, used. Not that he, he can't use other people. Yeah. But it's just that um, some may not either be willing to, to be led, but also God wants to use humble people so that the glory, as you had mentioned, mm go to the people because of maybe their educational yeah. background by Correct. the fact that they were led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's interesting. It's an interesting observation that uh, both Zuki and Nell have made. Hmm. But that doesn't close out people of upper classes, you know, because yeah. God uses everyone. Exactly. So he's not limited to the humble. Of course, humility, mm. not to negate humility, what I'm saying. Mm. Humility is an important aspect because even the nobles, as we would see in the coming chapters and all that, mm. were God used, you know, people of the upper class and people who had wealth, mm. God used. So God wants everyone to come and participate in his work. So everyone from all wakes of life mm. as a contribution to mm. making God's work. Mm. You know, whatever that God always, you know, wanted to have from man is the disposition of heart, yes. uh, that willingness to want to learn from him. I mean, you don't want to come to God and you are all knowing yes. because he's still the infinite God. So uh, in, individuals who have a very poor background, uh, most of the time they always, have, they always have a room where they can learn more. So God picking up uh, John the Baptist and training him in the wilderness, uh, that's 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 the only way. I mean, who who from the 
for example, from the Pharisees and Sadducees, guys who actually always want to be in the high market and, you know, high places, whatever they go, they want to have this human attention. It's very difficult for one to deal with that. In as much as God can use anyone, and he actually been using many people who actually have high caliber in their society and God will pull them out of the crowd and be able to train them. So what we need to cultivate is just willingness to want to, to be taught by God and be willing to carry the gospel of Christ. Now, when you come to the person that we're actually mentioning, Zwingli, you know, Zwingli came into a, a prophetic seashore, if I can use that word, prophetic seashore simply because there was a voice which was now being silenced. Martin Luther is now seemingly being silenced and God has to raise up somebody else. Now, we, we, are, we are talking about Christianity at large. There's so much uh, misconception going on in Christianity. There's a lot of different views and approach. But when you study about the character of Zwingli, you'll discover that he never read from, uh, from Luther, never consulted, never went and studied things of Luther, but they spoke the same thing. So when you come to Isaiah chapter 52, uh, the Bible speaking about a watchman, it says there, thy watchman shall lift up the voice, okay? With the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, and when the Lord shall bring again Zion. So God is able, as long as we are all under the auspices of the Holy Spirit, God is able to make you see the same thing that I see. So all the contradiction and you know this discrepancy that are going on god is going to sort it out yeah. so we saw it through this the life of you know zwingli and, and 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 luther because they all see things the same way so we are approaching toward the end of the world we if we don't see now eye to eye god is going to make it possible as long as we are we have that disposition of heart to learn god will connect us Amen. Amen. yeah talking about the reformers uh, they were leading reformers who were from humble life mm. and men who were most free of any of their time from pride or rank mm. and from the influence of faculty and priestcraft. Mm. So it's always, always God's plan to use someone for his glory to be returned to him oh, yes. as God. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Ulrich Zwingli this, um, was born as in a headsman cottage, mm -hmm. and we know that also Luther was born by a miner. Mm -hmm. Oh, that reminds of uh, Jesus Christ who was born of a carpenter. Mm -hmm. It's happening that way so that no one can glorify himself. Oh, yes. Else someone can say, because of this I have, God has shown it fit for me to mm. be a, a vessel. Yeah. Mm. If you look at mo most of the civilization in the world, uh, I want to give an example of Daniel chapter 2. <laughs> I, I like that prophecy because whenever you study it, there's a rise and fall of the kingdoms. Mm. And these kingdoms were, you know, well, superpowers. And when you study the char characteristic of each and every one of them, you discover that a pride always being at the root. Yeah of their fall. So God cannot use anyone effectively when pride is still having its stronghold on such a one. Yeah. So humbleness, it's a very key, you know, character, I mean, trait of character we need to have if we are to proceed and be able to succeed. Otherwise, if pride is still finding a place in us, Babylon came and went, Mid and Persia came and went, and all these kingdoms. So if God can bring a kingdom down, what makes you believe that if you're just a single person, you won't come down? And we are be given counsel to say that whosoever humbles himself, the Lord will lift him up. So Zwingli is going to fit into, into his work and others have, you know, they've actually find their niche into the work of God. It is because they've cultivated the character, the character traits of Christ himself. He was humble and was meek and God was able to use him. That's true. I mean, we find the issue of humility when you think about pride oh, yes. of the devil. I mean, True. The first person to display pride, Thanks. wanting to be like God. That's right. So we see, you know, even just to bring us back to Zwingli, we see that he was groomed by his grandmother and his father. Mm. You know, his grandmother would teach him Bible stories. And we know that the influence of his father in preventing him from, you know, siding with some of the, the false... Um, teachings that are going on oh, yes. and calling him back home True. to say come back I don't want you to get involved in these things mm. so I mean what is the role of fathers in you know we live in a society where fathers are absent you know I, I, I want us to think about the role of a father and how Zwingli's father played such an immense role in protecting him from these 
these bad doctrines that were going around True. to the point where he had to come back from school. Ah. Um, what, what, what the role of fathers is a very, very important um, role um, as the head of the, the family, at the head of the household. And I think um, the insight that Zwingli's father saw, you know, in him, you know, he saw that this, this child was, was developing intellectually. Mm -hmm. And maybe he saw his shortcomings in that he might not be able to develop him as he would. But he saw that um, he could be cultivated elsewhere, and that's why he sent him, you know, to, to go and study. Um, but unfortunately, where he was placed, you know, there were the monks. There were the two sects of the monks, mm -hmm. the Dominicans and the Franciscan monks, who saw the talents that this boy had and they were like, no, we can use it for ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. um, to bring more people in so that they can bring more revenue into the church. Um, yeah, you can see that their motives were always about money. Mm -hmm. And they also lived very um, laid back or, or lazy or, yeah, indolent lives at the yeah. time. And my yeah, father saw that, no, this is not the best course mm -hmm. for my child. Mm -hmm. If he goes in to live in luxury and 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 indolence no that's going to destroy his life and exactly when you heard about that you also acted as a father to protect him mm. you know you decided no let me call my son back this is not where um he can best fulfill his purpose and his mission in life <laughs> so we can see the the role of the father um in developing his child or sending him to school not depriving him of education but also when he sees that the circumstances around his development are not correct mm -hmm. he decided to recall him mm. and to protect him from those bad influences in his life. Mm -hmm. Well, the the importance of a father cannot be overemphasized, you know, because like Zumpi said, we live in a society of uh, where children are growing up without a father, fatherless homes. We see here how God put intelligence and wisdom in the father to, to, to redirect the path of Zwingli all mm -hmm. together. And he lands up, you know, in, in, in the hands of a much more able and a much more or enabling the environment and where the curriculum is then going to shape him and become mm. the leader that he then becomes. That's true. Yeah, when, when you come to the book, I mean, the great controversy, the book that we're going through, you discover that Martin Luther spoke strongly concerning the education that was actually existing in that time. Now, when, when you study in the great controversy still, the book says that education, which was actually designed by the papists, was actually decide, designed in such a way that they want to overthrow mm. the, reform, uh, no, the reformatory movement. Mm. So the, 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 the Je uh, Jesuits and the Catholics, they came together and said, okay, the only way that we can actually corrupt these individuals, because if we can give them a different set of education, we are going to bring to them a different mindset, and it, then they won't be able to proceed with the work. Now, Luther, speaking about a university of those days, and uh, we, okay, we can actually speak even today, he, he says the. Uh, I think page 140, paragraph 5 of Great Controversy, he says, I am much afraid that the universities will prove to be the great gates of hell. Yeah. Mm. So universi universities were not designed by the Catholic to make you a better person. Mm. It's to give you a different mindset. And guess what? Whatever they have behind their universities is to make you unfit for the work mm. that a God has called you to do. And he go, she goes on to say, he says, unless they diligently labor in explaining the Holy Scriptures, of which they are not, they are not doing, yeah. you know, the Holy Scriptures, and engraving them in the hearts of youth, I advise no one to place his child where the Scripture do not reign super paramount. Every institution in which men are not unceasingly occupied with the Word of God must become corrupt. So you look at our university of today, you go to VETS, UJ, you, you tell me how much Bible studies is being done in those, in those institutions. And we are the people who have a mission to continue the work of reformation. Yeah. So we'll have also just as Zwingli's father to be able to guide our younger ones. Because our greatest mission in the world is not to become the men of renown in the, in the high positions in this world. Mm -hmm. God has never called us to be like that. God can make us men of renown without even attending those institutions. Why? Because they're actually corrupt. They are teaching evolution. They are teaching homosexualities and all these things that you can name off. And these things were existing in the times of Luther. And Luther spoke strongly about that. So the father of Zwingli had an idea of what education was all about and what it was designed to do in the life of each and every child when they go in there. The previous chapter talking about Luther when he went to university. 
in the same chapter, the writer says, Luther, if it was not because of the intervention of God, Luther could have been corrupted as well. So God has to intervene in such a way that Luther has to be preserved. So we don't have to think that if we can, we can actually place ourselves in the hands of the devil, we're not going to be molded after his own mold. We will definitely going to be molded. Indeed, Brother Franz. So on that note, we'll take a break. Let's just think about the role of fathers, think about the role of education in the times that we are living in. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. As we were going to the break, we were talking about the education systems. We were talking about the world, the education systems, and the difference in the education systems that God actually wants to institute. And we're going to Zwingli, right? So he goes to school and he's influenced. And, and I want us to discuss about this influence. What was this influence like and how did he handle this influence? So Zwingli goes to Basel. Uh, and at Basel, he has a teacher by the name of Futtenbach. Uh, and um, this is a scholar who introduces him to ancient languages. In those studies, Zwingli is introduced to Christ. Hmm. He, he begins to see Christ, and he begins to see that Christ is the only ransom, hmm. okay, uh, uh, for a sinner, and uh, Christ, and, and that the Bible itself is its own interpreter. Oh yes. So those are the two main issues that he begins to see from those scriptures and uh, that shapes uh, his career and how he then uh, moves forward in his ministry, hmm. you know, as a person. Hmm. Uh, he searched the scriptures uh, more deeply. Hmm. The clearer appeared and construct between the truth and heresies of, of Rome. Hmm. He submitted himself to the Bible hmm. as the word of God the only sufficient, infallible rule. Mm. He saw that it must be its own interpreter. Oh, yes. As has already mentioned. Mm. He did not to attempt to explain scripture, to sustain preconceived theory yeah. mm. or doctrine, mm. but held it his duty to learn what its direct and obvious teaching. Oh, yes. He sought to avail himself of every help to obtain a full, correct understanding of its meaning. Mm. And he invoked the aid of the Holy Spirit, mm. which would, he declared, reveal it all who sought it in sincerity with prayer. Mm. You know, you know we, we need, when, when we listen to this particular you know, efforts that are put in place by these individuals from Martin Luther and the rest, the Bible has been the center focus of their, their very existence. You see, when you come to Zwingli, he he's actually said scripture. Now, you, you take the Protestant move because these were protesters. These were reformers. Now, you take their character and take the life of Zwingli when placed it in one of these mega churches that are actually being, you know, built up. Let's say, for instance, let's go to Austin or you go to um, T.D. Jack's church. You tell me how much Bible study are they studying? So you can see there's, there's a shift in as far as the mission of the Protestant churches are concerned. And there's, there's only one Protestant church that has to remain at the end of it all. So the Protestant are those who actually consider the Bible to be the foundation. Martin Luther said, if you take the Bible away from me, I have no, I have no comments that I can bring forth. Zwingli studied the scriptures and there's something so beautiful whenever you study the scriptures because Scriptures are going to guide you day to day and how you can become successful in your mission. The reason why there's so much, you know, miracle going on and people don't even know whether this one is a false prophet, that one is a true prophet, is simply because the scriptures have been thrown away. So in the dark ages, what happened was the Bible was not allowed to be in the hands of the common man. When it's come to our time, the Bible is there, but it has been twisted. So we've got all the pages all over the place, different versions and so on and so. They are there available. There are people, people are just being discouraged from studying it, the Bible. So the purpose of what is done now in the time that we're living in is made sure that there are as much as possible training his own ministers who can carry his own agenda in bringing to the people whom that have actually won their confidence. The idea of saying that you can trust the minister without trusting the word. 
And I will tell you, when you go to churches today, you find there are few individuals who study their Bible and who actually know their Bible and the importance of the Bible. Everyone depends upon the words of men. But Zwingli, he says, he went there and dig deeper and study the Word of God. You know, Zwingli, while he was studying the Bible, um, it states in the chapter that whenever he would um, read the Bible or study the Bible, um, philosophy, he says, and and scholastic or theology, oh yeah, uh, interpretations mm. would start battling. <laughs> when we approach the Bible, it should not be with preconceived ideas. And there was always this wrestling in his mind, you know, that there are these false methods that he would use when he was studying. Mm. And they would always be contradicting the Bible. And then he decided, you know what, for me to actually learn what the Bible is saying, I need to discard all of these preconceived ideas. Exactly. And take the Bible for what it is, mm. you know. And that's when he started to, uh, um, un or that the Bible started to unfold mm. the, the, the simple truths, you yeah. know. Um, unshrouded by, by, by all these other mysterious philosophies. Mm. That's also a lesson to us today, you know. Mm. Some people think that, you know, higher reasoning, higher criticism, all these other methods yeah. are yeah. based and whatever. Yeah. We don't need all of that. We all don't. we need is a humble and teachable spirit. Oh, yeah. And we just need to pray to God for the Holy Spirit mm. to guide us into all truth, for mm. he is the spirit of truth. So we don't need all these other philosophies. Mm. The Bible is its own interpreter. Yeah, and what we see just from, from Zwingli is the fact that it's not just about studying the Bible, but it was Christ being the center. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and that's really essential because every single one of our doctrines needs to be based in Christ. Correct. You know, in anything that we study, mm. you know, how do we give a sermon mm. and we don't uplift Christ? Mm. How do we teach about prophecy mm. and we don't see Christ? Exactly. This is the very issue that we have today, that mm. we've got a lot of different Gospels going around. The prosperity gospel, mm. which has nothing in its essence to do with Christ mm. and the work that Christ is doing in our hearts and in our lives. Mm. So in Zwingli's life, Christ was, or at least his preaching, he started his preaching, he was talking about, yeah. you know, Christ. I mean, yeah. he's even sent to, to Zurich and then he starts telling them that he's going to preach about the book of Matthew. Mm. Because why? The life of Christ has been enshrouded. It, it has been hidden. Yes. And Zwingli is trying to get Christ out to the people. Mm. Mm. And you know, before he sent to Zurich, um, he is at uh, Incendium first, you know, preaching. Yeah, and uh, just to emphasize on what Brother Noel had said, you know, he sparked a thought in me, the, the scripture that says, um, sanctify them by their truth, mm. and your word is truth, yeah. you know, John chapter 15. And um, when you look at these philosophies and sophistries of school of the schoolmen and all this, yeah. You do see there is a, a sharp contrast that actually there is no truth in this. Yeah. And that is why Zwingli formed himself in this battle because here was this truth, mm. found truth yeah. in Christ at the center. Exactly. And, you know, mm. and the gospels and everything, it was fresh and it was a sanctifying process, really, because the lies have a way of defiling a person. Oh, yeah. The practices that are associated with these lies. Mm blending in the philosophies and all those things. And then when they come up against the truth, there is a difference of opinion altogether. Mm. They yeah. are not in agreement. Yeah. It's the sanctifying process. It's the cleansing process mm. that purifies you. As the verse says, sanctify them by, by your truth and your word is truth. It's actually truth. Yeah. It, it's very nice when one has experienced the power of Christ in their personal lives. Yeah. This becomes the you know, the, 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 the power behind why you're going to carry the gospel in such a boldness. Yes. If you look at Zwingli, because he, he himself has experienced the power of Christ. Mm -hmm. So it becomes much easier to preach. Yeah. Because many times we don't get success in our ministry. It's simply because we ourselves have noted experience. Yeah. So when we experience the power of Christ, it doesn't matter where we are. Mm -hmm. God will give us success because there are so many individuals who are so afraid to go to remote areas, to go and establish churches, to go to places where the gospel has never entered, simply because they themselves have not yet experienced that power. So apart from Zwingli experiencing the power of Christ, he also sought on how he can distribute books. You know, he was a cowporter man. And this brings to my mind, you know, the fact that we Adventists, we do, we do have that department in our church, you know, where books must be given. And you will see this constantly happening with the, with, with the reformers. Wherever they went, 
in as much as they will have their Bibles, but they will also have literature to be able to be passed on because they understood that someday, one day, whatever, they are going to silence their voices, but the silenced preacher will continue preaching to the people and people will be able to see the light. So I just want to read this uh, small paragraph here, Great Controversy, 178 paragraph 1. It says, about this time, a new agency came in to advance the work of reform. One Lucien, Lucien was sent to, to Zurich uh, with some of Luther's writings by a friend of the reformed faith of Basel who suggested that the sale of these books might be powerful means of scattering the light, thus the light found entrance. Yeah. So very soon we're going to be restricted from speaking because hedge speech is speech and stuff and so on and so on. So the ag agency of the devil are now gathering their, their strength. But if we can do our best as individuals, as a church, and be able to scatter the books now, since the opportunity is still there, we'll see the fruit of these books in the future when, when we're going to be silenced. So they also understood that the books must be given and the books will pass on. Yeah. Literature evangelism is definitely the most powerful department. It has a big role to play in the spreading of the gospel. Oh, yes. But I want to take us back to Asendel. Mm. If in Asendel, we do see that he spends three years there before he moves to Zurich. Oh, yes. And, um, this is at the gate, it is, you know, the, in the Great Controversy, it is recorded that in the gate uh, of, of Ensendale, mm. it was written up there that uh, this is the, here, you receive mm. uh, uh, a mission for your city. Yeah. Get a mission for your city. <laughs> that was the first thing, uh, 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 Swingley, mm. you know, as a young preacher, because we talk about a youth, youth, youthful person oh, yes. who is energetic and, you know, uh, in his youthful years uh, to preach the gospel for Christ. He, he does the first thing no post. That's actually the complete remission of sin because he has already had Christ at the center. Yep. Mm. He's only found in Christ, not here. Exactly. In this, in this uh, 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 place mm. in some death. Mm. Also, there was a shrine of the Virgin Mary. Oh, yeah. There are two main things that this young mm. preacher preaches openly against, against while preaching the gospel of Christ. Yeah. To say, yeah. actually, there is this is meaningless. Mm -hmm. This is a waste of time. Uh, this is what the Bible says. Yeah. Truth again, you know, is is light. Mm. So it, he comes to this ancient dull place, and there's these two dark practices. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, this young preacher comes in and he preaches light and enlightens the mind, the people's minds, and people begin to see the light. And they, he, he he's following. Mm. He, multiplies and more people are converted into Protestantism as it were, or, or they become reformers. I think to add on your point, um, what, what, what Swingley brought across yeah. was, um, as you mentioned, people don't have to come all the way yeah. mm. to a shrine, you know, um, to get some sort of forgiveness of sins because God is where they are. Absolutely. So they can pray where they are for mm. forgiveness of sin. Mm. And the forgiveness is not through a specific shrine, of Mary the Virgin, but it's through Jesus Christ mm. highlighting or, or uplifting his sacrifice, mm. the centrality of Christ mm. um, for the remission of sins. Um, the book also um, contrasts how the two group of people received these messages. Yeah. You know, there were some who came there and they were like, yeah. so we came all the way for nothing, this is useless. Yeah. And they would rather accept yeah. that the priests um, would, would would deal with their salvation and yeah. they would not have to seek for purity of heart really? on their own accord. There is a way out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They would rather be comforted in the lies of that fourth <laughs> theology. Yeah. You know? But there was another class who also accepted um, yes. that, hey, we don't have to believe in these superstitions. Yeah. You know? yes, yeah. We don't have to pay. Yeah. Mm. Salvation. Mm. Um, for salvation is full and free mm. through Jesus Christ. That's right. And not only did they accept the message, but mm. wherever they came from, they spread the message Absolutely. across. You know, mm. the other point, that Brother Francois was mentioning about yes. the, the help of the call porter we came. And I think it also shows that sometimes when we're engaged in the work alone, mm. God sometimes sends help us. That's right. It brings support. To oh, yes. Moses thought he was alone. Yep. God sent mm. So God is always there to support the work of the ministry to make sure that it goes forward. We are not alone, but mm. we have helpers. Around. Oh, yes. Amen. And we know that the greatest help we have is the Holy Spirit, the mm. angels of God are always with us. But I love that point to say that 
we are not alone. God will bring agencies to assist us. Absolutely. And we were talking about uplifting Christ, uplifting the cross. Mm. These are the things that we're supposed to think about. These are the themes of salvation. Mm. You know, God says, come by without money, without yes. price. Oh, yes. So, so salvation is not for sale. Uh. It's a gift. And this is what Zwingli was trying to show. True. So, I want you at home to think about whether you've accepted this gift and whether you are living it in your lives mm. as we take a break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back from the break. Thank you for staying tuned. If you were listening, we were talking about Zwingli, the young man who was uplifting Christ in all things that he did. And I just want to read a verse that encourages us, all of us, especially the young people, to stand up more for Christ. And it's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. It says, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Mm. It was very true. I mean, the preaching of the word has to continue. And what I love is whenever the word is being preached, things are being exposed. Yeah. Corruptions are being exposed. So Zwingli went about preaching. He didn't want to just come to where the Mary statue was and then begin to point fingers on the statues. No, he actually had a word and be able to show the people, look, one, two, three, four, five does not connect with the practices that are going on there. Mm -hmm. So the spirit of the reformers, whenever you study them from the first one until to where we are, every one of them actually had a spirit of wanting to expose the corruptions. Mm -hmm. So we cannot be different from them if we are to catch up the same spirit. You know, the Bible speaks that God is going to send Elijah the prophet in the last days. Mm -hmm. And you want to look at the characteristics of Elijah the prophet, the Tishbite, in the times of the Old Testament, he was ab able to expose the false teachings of Jezebel. When you come in the New Testament, John the Baptist, led by the Spirit of God as well, a larger spirit, he did the same thing. The, all the corruption that are, were going on with the Jewish nation, he exposed them. Now, Malachi chapter 4 speaks about God is going to send Elijah the prophet. What do you expect that Elijah the prophet in the last days will do as well? So Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11, the Bible says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Okay, so that's expose them. So we don't have to try to tie our hands together with the work of unfruitful. No. God has called us to make sure that we just speak the word and then they are going to be exposed in the process. Yeah. And simply did not, you see, when, when you have set yourself up to, to become that kind of a person, yeah. you are not looking to become a populist. You're sure. looking to be liked. That's right. You have seen the value of the truth mm. and the importance of lifting it up, yeah. you know, because you're not looking for men's favor. It's true. They're going to like you or not. Yeah. 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 Uh, when uh, people are receiving new uh, theologies, mm. there is uh, those who are who tend to be positive and those who tend to be negative. Oh, yes. As previously, they have been informed already by you guys. Uh, some people about the shrines and stuff, mm. they were scared to be removed from their comfort zone. Or mm. Even if even today, you cannot be an evangelist if you are in your comfort zone. Oh, yeah. In order for you, for God to work in you, mm. you need to be out of a comfort zone. So, mm. I'm reading from 100 and, uh, page 149. Uh, it's saying those the, uh, some uh, uh, of his plans were disapproved mm. and endeavored. They dissuade him mm. from it. Zwingli remained steadfast, meaning uh, even if when things do not favor you, mm. uh, you need to stand. Mm. And uh, there is no way that you can stand on your own. Yep. We need the Holy Spirit mm. always. Mm. And as we have been informed already by the uh, presence of angels in Luther, no. angels are still present in us. No, yeah. So uh, Zwingli declared that he was about to introduce no new method, mm. trying to make them at ease knowing that yeah, this is nothing new. Oh yeah, you know, 
Because when people are out of their comfort zone mm. tend mm. to to think otherwise. Mm. Already an interest had been awakened in the truth he taught and the people flocked in great numbers to listen to his preachings. Mm. Many who had long ceased, ceased to attend the service were among his hearers. He began mm. his ministry by opening the Gospels and reading and explaining to his hearers the inspired narrative of the life mm. preaching of the death of Christ. Oh, yeah. So it means that uh, if they, they do not speak about the weight, mm. it means that there is no light in them. Oh, yes. I think yes. the point that you're mentioning that the people had, <clears throat> no, had started to or were no longer going to the services. Mm. Um, because they were no longer going to the services, they were no longer paying <laughs> for the pardon, you know. And what the book mentions was that um, because they were no longer paying, there was no longer revenue coming into the treasury. Yeah. Yeah. The salary of Zwing mm. was affected. Oof. So now it had to go down. But, you know, he didn't complain. Yeah. He was actually happy mm. that it was going down because he knew that now the effect of preaching Christ was taking hold upon the oh, yes. oh, yes. and therefore they no longer needed to pay. <laughs> and because his salary went down, he didn't co complain. Mm. So he saw that mm. actually people are now um, finding salvation in Christ. Mm. I'm trying to think that how many people would be happy? You know, <laughs> their salaries are cut down. Mm. So in the time that we're living in, people have had to take pay cuts. Mm. But he was um, he was actually joyous because um, Christ was lifting was being lifted up even though his salary was being cut. It's a, that's interesting because uh, you, you just uh, took me back <coughs> to the actual charge he was given. Yeah. By, 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 by when he was uh, given this position as preacher in the Cathedral of Zorro. Mm. Uh, that you are going, your main aim here is to increase the revenue of the <laughs> And the courage that Zorba Swingley has is to stand up for the truth, mm. waver it. Mm and say, in a polite way, not, not in a disrespectful oh, yeah. way, yeah. no? Yeah. I will preach from the gospel of Matthew. He made his purpose very clear that, look, you have a particular purpose mm. and it's completely at long ahead to the purpose mm. I have. He did not hide it. Yeah. So there's no fear for favor or and so on that that is going on with this young person again with mm. that quality coming forth strongly again. Mm. Now, when we see him again when Samson, Samson is a, is a, is a, is a contemporary of Dead Cell. Dead Cell in Germany was then was a, a chief indulgence seller. Thank you. <laughs> seller of indulgences. That's what they wanted to say. And uh, a, a person fulfilling the, a similar role as Samson in mm. Switzerland, you know? And again, you, so you see there uh, Zwingli coming forth strongly as, as a young man and saying, actually, you do not need to buy, to purchase pardon. Pardon is offered for free. Yeah. Christ died on the cross. Okay, so there's these two Gospels that are being mm -hmm. advanced, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, at the same time by these two people. You have Samson preaching the purchasing of sin. You have Zwingli preaching that you don't buy a, a clear conscience. It, yeah. It's a free gift from God. And uh, it is mentioned in the book that Samson, in one of his uh, 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 preachings, he, he went back home with not even a penny. That's how successful God had made the work of Zwingli to become. Yeah. Amen. And it's interesting that that success follows through because then a plague arises. Amen. Yes. And it's, it's, it's called the great death. So when this great death arises, people are sick. Yeah. You know, and you've got this these two contrasting gospels where the people that are believing and buying, you know, indulgences or at least buying a license to sin, they don't have a refuge during this time. They're afraid of dying. They're wondering what's going to happen to their lives. And you've got, you know, the reformers here, which is Zwingli in this case, mm. preaching about Christ and how Christ gives the peace. Oh, yeah. And he's not afraid to die. Yes. The book tells us that he was literally on his deathbed. In fact, there were rumors going around that Zwingli had died. Yeah. That's how bad the plague was. Mm. But Zwingli relies and has that peace in God because he knows that even if he dies, mm. his soul is sitting with Christ who will save him in the last day. Mm. 
Mm. Absolutely. You know, it is important. Uh, the, the message that the, the reformers were preaching is important, but it was a message of hope. Mm. There was no hope in the message that was being taught uh, uh, by, by, by the uh, Roman uh, powers. Oh, yeah. After death, after all these things and indulgences and bigotry and all these things, these superstitions, mm. you didn't necessarily have hope, or or, you know, or peace mm. within yourselves. Mm. But here was a gospel of peace telling you that you, death is not eternal death. Oh, yes. Asleep. Yeah, yes. Okay, so even if you die, you, 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 you it, it, there's still hope, okay, mm. of a resurrection, mm. okay, when Jesus comes. Mm. Now, Uzingli, you mentioned he's sick to the point of death. The rumors go around saying he's dead, but mm. he's not dead. His hope is in Christ, mm. that he's the propitiation of sin, mm. okay? That Christ died and, and the cross of Calvary is what he trusts. Oh, yes. Now, it is recorded in the great controversy that actually the plague gave impetus to the gospel. Oh, yeah. Because more people began to see that actually when I go and purchase the indulgence, when I go and do penance, this is not assisting me in any way. Mm. Now, that kind of a realization wouldn't have possibly occurred mm. without the play. Mm. Because people were doing these practices, uh, you know. With, now, the, there came a time of the plague when they actually needed to see the, the, the truthfulness <laughs> and the effects of these practices mm. at play. And these practices did not come to the party and the people were disappointed and instead found truth and refuge in the gospel that Zwingli was preaching. Mm. That's where they found hope. Oh, That's yes. where they saw that Christ is oh, yes. in us. We are living in the times of COVID-19. Also, mm. and oh, yeah. Our own yeah. today, it's happening. You know, and people are running to and fro, seeking for that and that. Mm. I know, and mm. so on. But we know it's a pestilence. Oh, yeah. And our only hope, just like a swing because only hope we are. was it is Christ Himself. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, when, when you come, I, I like thank you so much, my sister Fatu. You just put it across there. You see, Zwingli was not just a historical figure. Yes. Zwingli has to exist in the last things. Yeah. Yes. You know. Amen. So if when you take Zwingli and you bring him here, well, then we can bring the gospel very close to each one of us. Yes. You know, looking at Zwingli's character, are we anywhere near? I think mm-hmm. that that's, that's becomes a measuring stick as well. Yeah. But I, I just want to show you from the great controversy still where Ellen Jewett speaks about that people are going to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ are just similar to Zwingli. Mm. All right. So I just, so just a quick one. It says uh, the laborers will be qualified rather by the unction of the his spirit than by the training of literal mm-hmm. institutions. Mm-hmm. Men of faith and prayer will be constrained to go forth with holy zeal declaring the words which God gave them. The seas of Babylon will be laid open. The, uh, the, the, the fearful result uh, of, of enforcing the observance of church, I mean of church, by civil authority, the inroads of spirit, spiritualism, this, uh, the stiffly of rapid progress of the papal power, all will be unmasked, just as Zwingli went about and unmask the work of the papacy, you know, all the corruptions. We are going to have a group of individuals, Zing, Zwinglis, in the last days, mm. who are going to also, not having so much education from the schools of the day, but they're going to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and they will preach the gospel, which is going to expose and unmask all the corruption that are going on within the churches, as also into the political world, and the work will be done. Mm. Amen, amen. Zwingli is under attack. You, you mentioned that he's under attack and the, there's two occasions where he has to appear. Mm. First in a council in Zurich and there he is, uh, you know, he's, he's, he, no action is taken against him. But then there's a conference in Baldwin also that Zwingli has to face. Now in Zurich he made a, 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 a personal representation oh, of yeah. himself. Yeah. But we do see that in Baldwin, uh, at the conference in Baldwin, <laughs> Swingley says, Okolo, Okolo, okay, let me get this name right. Okolo Pedias. Okolo Pedias is yeah. the person he sends as a representative yeah. of the reformers yeah. you know, to appear at the conference. Mm. This is a conference that lasts for 18 days. Mm. And uh, for each day, the, the, the reformers are diligent to send a mm. message to Swingley mm. one way or the other, you know, through the circumstances they face yeah. because they were unable to, but they manage. 
and swing the right letters by night. Mm. And they reach the conference oh, by yes. morning when every day, mm. throughout the 18 days of the conference. And he gives instruction and direction in terms of how they should respond. Mm. The stark differences in terms of the the demeanor and character of oh, the yes. yes, and the priest and the prelate and the bishops, you know? Mm. And we are even told that through that work, Zwingli did more than if he had actually been physically present yeah, because yes. through the yeah. pen mm. he was able to you know articulate the gospel and to actually give word to what he would have said in person and i mean if we know we know that if he had appeared in person he probably would not have even survived oh, yes. so the printed page the writing that god has given some of you at home who are talented in writing yes. god wants you to use it Absolutely. but in closing for today we want to say lift up christ Tell the world. Yes, lift up Christ, tell the world. Don't tell the world about superstitions, about church doctrine, about church protocol, but we need to tell the world about Christ. And today, as we usually say, we say, dare to be a... A Daniel. A Daniel. But today we say, dare to be a Zwingli. We thank you for joining us. We'll close in prayer and we'll ask our brother Francois to pray for us. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, what's in heaven, we thank you so much, Lord, for being with us ever since we began our discussions. How we pray, dear Lord, that you're going to help us to continue to study more. And dear Lord, for those who have been with us ever since the beginning, that I continue to bless them. Let them see the light in the life of these ministers who stood for Christ. And we pray, dear Father, that they're going to choose you just as Zwingli and the rest of the reformers were able to choose you so that you can lead and guide their life each day, one day at a time. In Jesus Christ's name, Father, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.